the Interior Ministry released a statement imposing a cease to sex curfew on Boku, uh, which has had the conflict there renewed. We'll be looking into all of these and really uh, try to find solutions, as it were, going into this year's general election. But let me first start by introducing my panel here with me. And I will start on my left. I have the Member of Parliament for North Tong, Samuel Okujeto Ablaka. Good evening to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us Hi, on Agenda. Good evening, Beatrice. I also have on my right uh, Frank Davis. He is the Chairman, uh, Constitutional and Legal Committee of the Governing MPP. Good evening to you, sir. Thank you for joining us as well. Thank you, Beatrice. Of course, I do have a video call with us, uh, senior and renowned lawyer, Chachu Chikata. Uh, good evening to you, Council. Thank you for joining us on Agenda. Okay, we can't hear you. If you can unmute yourself so that we can can hear you uh, clearly, but uh, I'm sure if you've been following the politics of Ghana, Chachiti uh, Kata has been or uh, was actually one of the lead counsel or lawyers for the 2012-2013 election petition. So if you can hear us, good evening to you. Yes. Welcome to Agenda. I, I, I can hear you and sorry, I was, I was uh, on mute, but uh, I was recognizing that uh, it's a pleasure to be on Agenda. Thank you so much, sir. We'll also be joined by Franklin Kujo, his founding president, Imani Africa, as well as uh, Vincent Echo. He is uh, the Safua. deputy, Safua. Safua, he is deputy local government minister uh, representing Tafo Pankrono in the Ashanti region. He'll be joining us as well. But I want to start this conversation rolling, and we want to look at Sao, the, the, the constituency, well, it's under the constituency of Guan, which has been given that golden opportunity to uh, get a representative for parliament, uh, in parliament going into this year's general election. And I want to start with you, council. I mean, we've seen or we saw what happened prior to the 2020 general election. They were disenfranchised. A, a number of you, including yourself, even in that petition to the high court, felt that it was unjust. Uh, it wasn't justified, really, how it was done. But now the Electoral Commission is making it possible, as it were, for uh, this, these four communities to vote under the Guan constituency. It must be very good news for you. You must be happy. Well, we hope so. Before the 2020 elections, various delegations from these communities actually met with the Electoral Commission about the vote and got all kinds of assurances that they would be able to vote in the parliamentary as well as in the presidential elections. Suddenly, on the eve of the elections, 6 December to be precise, in the evening, they had announcements on radio and in the media which said that they could only vote in the presidential election, but not in the parliamentary election. And that is why, indeed, for the last four years. And this is, I mean, it's a very serious situation. We shouldn't just gloss over it, that a group of people, communities in Ghana, have been unrepresented in parliament over the last almost four years as we're coming into that. So I think that we, you know, we have to get into why such a thing could happen. What has been the role of the Electoral Commission, which has a certain mandate under the Constitution to make sure that democracy is protected? What has been their role in undermining democracy? What has been their role? Uh, from where you said, what do you think has been the issue? Because I remember that uh, somewhere in, in February, I believe this year, we had the Electoral Commission boss or a statement from the EC indicating that, well, at the time they wanted to uh, ensure that Sal was able to participate in the 2020 general election. Parliament in November had gone on recess and therefore it couldn't really do much. That's a nonsense because... Everybody knows that Parliament has a certain timetable and if you're taking steps to ensure that these people have their right to vote protected, I think you do it according to the timetable of Parliament. But you know what? 
I, I think that what is striking over the years, in my mind, is the inconsistent positions that the EC has been taking on the matter. Because 6th of December, you announce that they cannot vote, and you give reasons, like you're mentioning, that um, Parliament is about to rise and so on. But if you knew that you were going to have to create a constituency for them because it had been determined that they should not um, be part of our whole constituency anymore. There are legal steps that you should take. But when you look at the legal steps that they took, I mean, those legal steps did not live up to the requirements of the law. For instance, they passed a, cons uh, a constitutional instrument 119, which was called the District Electoral Areas and designation of units regulations, in which they sought to move, you know, these people into Jasikan districts. But the Electoral Commission doesn't have power to create or to change districts. So, I mean, they have some, you know, a role in re making recommendations for districts to be created, but they can't create districts so that constitutional instrument does not meet you know a simple test of legality then later around july 2020 they passed another constitutional instrument one to a representation of the people parliamentary constituencies instrument in which they claimed that they were moving those electoral areas into another constituency, Boehm constituency. Now, it's very interesting. Earlier this year, in around May, I think during an exchange of, um, you know, positions, I mean, a, a very rigorous debate with Franklin Cujo, we had the Electoral Commission on the 16th of May come up to say that the reason that they could not allow the um, Sao people to vote in the Boeing constituency was because they could not be part of the Jasikan district. Because if they joined the Jasikan district, it would mean that the representative for Boeing would actually be covering two different districts, some, some a Guan district and a Jasikan district. Now, this was 16th of May this year that they were making, giving that, giving that explanation. They said it was non-compliant with the local uh, government um, act, the local governance act. Now, I mean, did they suddenly realize this in May this year? And Clearly, from the beginning, December 2020, if they really believed that these people had become part of the Boehm constituency, I guess then they should have asked them to vote in Boehm constituency. Do I hear but, you? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Do I hear you say that the EC intentionally did that? Because if I read a statement from the Electoral Commission, the one I was referring to earlier, uh, it, it, it's, it gave explanations as to why it felt that anybody who uh, is claiming that the Electoral Commission intentionally disenfranchised people is just being disingenuous. Well, I mean, obviously, they did it deliberately in the sense that they issued an announcement saying that people cannot vote. That's a deliberate act. I mean, when you say intentional or whatever, I, I don't know what other meaning you can uh, attribute. They, they intentionally put out a statement on the eve of the election saying to some people, you cannot vote in parliamentary elections. That happened. That no. actually happened. Mm. And, oh. and the point that I want to end with is that even that constitutional instrument 128, 
does not meet basic tests of constitutionality because the Electoral Commission is governed by provisions of the Constitution. If you look at what Article 47.5 of the Constitution sets out, there are ways in which you can alter constituencies or their boundaries. Now, the people in South have been part of Hawkeye constituency since 2016. And under Article 47.5, you can change those constituencies in not less than seven years or on the basis of a census. There are clear provisions as to how you can change the constituency. Nothing like that had, uh, it wasn't seven years in 2020, 2016 wasn't seven years ago. And the other preconditions for changing the boundaries had not happened. So, I mean, even at that time, it did not make sense. So why was there such a determination so deliberately to create seeming legal frameworks which were inconsistent with the laws of the land. And then suddenly, in, in May this year, we have an acknowledgement by themselves that they also thought that they couldn't do it because it was in con contravention mm. of some... Which were inconsistent with the laws of Ghana. That's what you say. I want to come to my panel right now, uh, but I want to ask you... This last question before I come to my panel to get their preliminary thoughts on this and we'll go to the other issue. Uh, do you, uh, I, I heard you made two points. You said that we cannot gloss over this. Yes, EC uh, is giving the people the opportunity to vote this year. So seemingly it looks like the issue has been solved. But you're still saying that we cannot gloss over this. And then you also make an allegation of inconsistency of the Electoral Commission. Why are you saying this? Are you worried that perhaps... Uh, we could see a repeat of what happened in 2020, briefly? Well, I hope not, but you can never tell because, like I said, the track record has not been one of consistency. I'm coming to you, uh, Samuel Kujeta Blakwa. Not according to me, according to the facts, for goodness sake. I mean, we, we, ju we just have to look at the facts. In 2020, 6 December, they were not allowed to vote even though supposedly constitutional instruments have been created. Mm. So I, I want to come to you, Ms. Ablakwa, just your brief comment on this, because we need to really talk about the other uh, issues that are going to affect us, really, in this year's general election. What's your thoughts on what uh, Mr. Shikata is saying? Well, good evening. First of all, I think it is important to celebrate uh, Uncle Chachi Shikata on this matter. He has put up such a spirited defense of the people of Santra Kofi, Akbafu, Lolobi, and Lipe. A man of considerable age, he has on a, virtually on a daily basis pursued this matter for the last four years. I remember that he was in the high court in Ho, mm. had to be traveling, yeah. you know, the risk involved, the, the distance, the inconvenience and all of that. And I think that uh, senior citizens like him, statesmen, Par excellence like him who, you know, dedicate themselves and sacrifice so that our constitution will be respected and the rights of citizens will be respected, ought to be celebrated. And I think that tonight, uh, I know he doesn't like these things. He's very, you know, modest and doesn't like to be praised. But, I mean, uh, I am inspired by, by, by his, uh, his, his spirited defense mm. of the people of, of Sa. And look, let's be honest. This is a matter that clearly falls within the realm of gerrymandering. It was clear from the outset that there was an agenda. And that agenda was to facilitate the victory of the ruling government in Hohoi. And that is what became the outcome. I hold in my hands a petition from this joint steering committee of the Akbafu and Lolobi traditional areas. On the 27th of November 2020, they wrote to the Electoral Commission seeking clarity on this matter. It reads, 
the Joint Steering Committee of the Akpafu and Lolobi traditional areas by this petition respectfully seek urgent clarification and assurance over their electoral status and voting mandates in the upcoming 2020 elections. This is to prevent discrimination and disenfranchisement of our people by administrative muddling on technicalities. By our reckoning and all indications, we remain part of the electoral areas under the Hohoi constituency. By our reckoning and all indications, we remain part of the electoral areas under the Hohoi constituencies in the Hohoi district of the Volta region in the current electoral cycle. We are surprised to find in the published voters register that we are assigned to Jassikan district, with which we have had no prior history, mandate or engagement at the primaries. You must be aware that we were lumped into the new OT region in error and against our express wishes, which matter is currently before the law courts. And they mm. continued. Now, the Electoral Commission... And this is despite the referendum that was organized Ex where 50% of the people in these respective mm -hmm. areas participated. Exactly. The Electoral Commission then met this eminent group and assured them that you will vote, you have no qualms, no fears at all, be rest assured. Only for this press release on the eve of the election by the Electoral Commission, confirming their fears. The Electoral Commission issued this statement, a copy of which I have in my hands, saying that the Commission wishes to announce for the information of the general public, especially voters in the BOEM constituency, that the 7 December 2020 presidential parliamentary election will take place in the BOEM constituency as scheduled from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. However, as a result of the creation of the Guan District level local government, Guan District Assembly Establishment Instrument 2020, and pending the creation of the Guan constituency, eligible voters in the Guan District will vote only in the presidential election but not in the parliamentary election, in the Buem constituency. Voters in the Guan district are to take note of this directive from the Electoral Commission. So from what you're reading and your, uh, your, your, your thought pattern, as it were, you seem to agree with Mr. Absolutely. Chikata that Absolutely. this was uh, intentionally done to disenfranchise Absolutely. the people Absolutely. of Absolutely. South. Absolutely. This is a clear case of gerrymandering, which denied the people of the Article 42 rights. Look, Article 42 of our constitution is very clear. The right to vote in an election. It is a right and it is an entitlement. You see, in your introduction, I heard you say, oh, they now have a good opportunity. No, it's a right. I feel so embarrassed that I have served in this eight parliament, which is not whole, which is not complete. A parliament that did not have four communities represented. And then we say that we are representatives of the people. We are just representatives of some of the people. Not all the people. It is forever a scar on the conscience of our democracy. Forever a scar on the forever conscience scar. of, on our, and, of and, our democracy. And, and this, this should not... Look, you read the 15th May 2024 statement by the Electoral Commission. I mean, it's so appalling, so condemnable. This, the Electoral Commission says that they didn't know that Parliament would go on recess at the time and that because of the recess, they couldn't act. Such gross incompetence. Who does not know the parliamentary calendar in this country? It is published well ahead of time. In any case, our engagement with the Electoral Commission, as an MP in my third term, 12 years now, I can tell you that we have sat to meet the 21-day requirements of CIs on even far less important matters, which do not even bother on constitutional rights. Mm. We, we, we are told to come and sit. You know, Ordinarily, we don't sit on Mondays and weekends. Mm -hmm. But for allies to mature, mm -hmm, some of which we are now repealing today, like that airline, that obnoxious airline 2462, which allows forest, the, the, the president mining to... Mining in forest Exactly. Mm -hmm. All allies of that nature mm -hmm, have all been passed. We are called to come and sit Mondays, sometimes on Saturdays, so that these allies will meet the 21-day maturity period. So let me so, ask so, you. So, so, so look... The, the, the fact that the Electoral Commission is just making excuses, passing the back. Then there was a, a day I asked the Attorney General a question in Parliament. He also came saying, don't blame me, uh, blame Electoral Commission. The local government ministry is also saying that, you know what, everybody is passing the back. Yeah. Nobody is taking responsibility. Meanwhile, as Professor Azar will say, the cardinal sin of this eight Parliament is the fact that it is the only Parliament in the history of our entire Republic which has been an incomplete parliament, a parliament which was not whole, 
a parliament which did not represent as many as four com four communities with over seventeen thousand uh, votes. I mean, I mean, and, 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 and and we think that this is something that we should tolerate, we should accept. So we have been most unfair, and, and I think that it is so condemnable that the institutions which acted in such a crude manner, mm. without recourse to due process, without recourse to our constitution, the rights of the people, and they have even refused to, to, to take responsibility and to give us assurances that this will never occur in our history. It must be condemned by all of us. Let me and ask the you very briefly. Do not deserve this. Let me ask you very briefly, and I'll get a response of Frank Davis. Uh, I mean, you say that this is a, a scar on our democracy, but what would you say to critics or skeptics who would argue that, okay, it's a scar, but at the end of the day, they are voting this year, so why don't we move on? No, nobody, the four years, what they have lost taxation without representation, they are citizens, they are rights. Look, I have a hazard here of 10th November 2023. Out of empathy, mm, my conscience feeling so bad, I had to file questions on their behalf because they have no representation. And the, this, this 10th November question I filed in 2023 had to do with their roads, their road network. Mm. And their roads minister, if you go through the, the column 104, you see the then roads minister, Honorable Amwakwata, saying that, they have not been programmed yet. They don't have plans for them, but they are hoping that. Who wants to follow up on all of this? Who and to? this is just one sector. You know, so you can't quantify what they have lost. Members of parliament have access to the MPs' common fund. And all of us, you see us on a daily basis. We are doing interventions, scholarships here. We are advocating on behalf of our constituents. We are representing them. We are making sure that if there are bad roads, if they need hospitals, if they need portable water, who wants to do all of this for them? Who wants to champion their cause? Meanwhile, they are also citizens. They have paid taxes. They continue to pay taxes. Or including the obnoxious ones. The e-levies, the emission levy, the COVID tax, which should not be on our books. They are paying. And yet, nobody is representing them and championing their cause. Nobody is championing should, their cause. This is an aberration we should never have occurred. It should never have occurred. Let me get your thought, Frank, uh, Frank uh, Davis. Uh, so, we heard Mr. Blackwa directly accusing the MPP, saying that it was an agenda for victory. This is condemnable. How do you respond to this? And then we'll move on to the other issue. Good evening to your cherished listeners and viewers. And I, 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 I didn't hear him say that it was, it, was, it, was, it was something done at the instance of the MPP. I didn't hear that. No, didn't he, he never said so. Mm. So let's correct that one before we go on. He never said so. so okay, but at the I end of the day, he I, said it was an agenda for victory. Yes, agenda for victory. I don't know what that contest is, but let's, 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 let's get on. Uh, you know, uh, I can understand the passion with which my celebrated senior has spoken. And, of course, he was lawyer for them in the high court. And some aspects of the matter even found surface in the Supreme Court. So, yes, I, I can understand when people are disenfranchised, it's, it's not something to take lying down, no matter the circumstances under which it occurs. I, I, can, I can associate with what uh, my learned senior and, 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 and university lecturer uh, Uncle Chachuchukata has espoused. So it's, you agree that the EC Ed? Well, I, 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 I can't pretend to be a spokesperson or an official of the EC. So but at least you I, know I, the I don't speak. I don't speak for the EC. I speak for myself. The EC gave a statement of some sort, an explanation, right, as to why this couldn't happen. The people of SAR, yes, voted in the presidential election. They, they, they didn't exercise their franchise in the parliamentary election. It is sad enough. I mean, I, I, I won't run away from that fact. No matter what you say, it, it, was, it wasn't the best. But the EC gave a statement as to why it happened. Uh, I wouldn't say the reasoning is nonsensical, as my Lenny Senior put it, but uh, it did not meet... And Mr. Black also said it, it was incompetent. It, it, it did not meet the expectation of... of of the people of SAR, and of course my 
Then I flew into Chichikata. But that is what it was. And I think we should uh, beg of ourselves to put it behind us. Fortunately, they have the opportunity to exercise their franchise. Now, whatever they lost in the last four years, I'm sure people like Samuel Kujetra can make it happen for them. So we should, we should just let this unfortunate matter rest and we get on with, 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 with our lives. Uh, they would have the opportunity to vote. I mean, the right to exercise your, your and cast your vote is fundamental. I mean, nobody has the right to take anybody's fundamental rights from him, no matter the circumstances. But that is what happened. And I think we should. We should, we should, we should, we should, we should just hold ourselves. So at this stage, if I hear you correctly, you would not, uh, as it were, condemn or praise the Electoral Commission for how, what happened? Because you, you just said that you are not a spokesperson for the but EC. I, how, how am I supposed to speak for the EC? I can't condemn them. I can't say anything. They offer the statement. They should be made to explain whatever they meant by that statement. I can't come to the studio and speak for them. But I mean, there, there was nothing about gerrymandering in, in that matter. No, we don't do respect. It wasn't about well, gerrymandering. But if you look at the facts, it, it wasn't it, about it gerrymandering. Favored the ho -ho it wasn't about gerrymandering. It favored the ho-ho. It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was just a twist. I mean, yes, eventually, uh, uh, what's his name? I mean, we won. Mm -hmm. We won the seat. But I mean, those are incidents and facts of history. So, brother, let's move on. Yeah? Let's move on, he <laughs> says. Uh, and I just want to, uh, Franklin Kujo, uh, I know that you're one of those, and indeed Mr. Chikata mentioned you uh, as having had some conversations around this. If you can briefly talk about this, and then I'll go back to uh, Mr. Chikata on, on uh, our next conversation, please. Well, good evening to uh, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I feel like... Uh, a prince right now. I mean, I think the Leonard uh, uh my good friend Okujeto, and to some extent Frank Davis has spoken about this matter. But I think I need to say a few words about it as well. I mean, as an indigenous of the area, um, I, and I know that Chachikata has been very helpful to us. I mean, he's one of those few uh, lawyers that that actually was much interested in this case. I mean, he calls you and says, what are you guys doing about this case, really? And he goes up and down, as Sami such said, and uh, we owe him a debt of gratitude that I'm not sure we can pay in his lifetime. Um, but it's sad that uh, such a learned man like this could be toyed with in terms of some of the comments that were made in court. And to the extent that one judge had to say at a point that, well, maybe he didn't have jurisdiction for the case. This is, I suspect this is the, not that I suspect, this was actually what happened in the whole case. After three years, after the taking of the case in that hole, the judge eventually said, well, he has no jurisdiction. And I thought that was an insult to the Leonard judge, judge uh, sorry, the Leonard judge. Together. But it appeared as if he didn't know what he was doing. And so it feeds into this whole mantra, or this whole contrived, uh, not necessarily contrived, but this whole idea that is an orchestrated plot, including the judiciary, uh, to deny us a representation. I mean, I remember when this mother went to the Supreme Court. The Attorney General was almost mocking, making mo mo statements that were almost uh, in mockery of the, of, the whole, of the whole situation. I mean, that's when I decided that I didn't think he was a Minister of Justice, but just a, a very partisan Attorney General. But anyway, a lot has happened. And to think that, to suggest that this was not a planned thing, is to say the least, actually it's an insult to be told that it's not planned. They are not planned. Out of, we, we should have been hearing from the president. We never heard from the president. We never heard from the vice president. Not even once. Just apologizing for what has been done. And also the East, they were even at the point fighting us, right? I mean, I think a few months back, they were in the media basically castigating myself and lawyer Tachikata, mostly suggesting that they didn't know what we were about. I mean, they were emboldened in their own very contrived from their contrived position making it sound as though they didn't do anything wrong. I know there's some, some, some is, uh, rendition of events is actually true. I mean, I spoke to Jim Mensa. Don't forget I used to work with her. I said, my chiefs want to see you because they are concerned about this whole South thing. So, oh, don't worry, they should come. Met them, and six days later, that letter was written. 
uh, on the eve of a crucial election, saying that we couldn't vote. And that's it. Since then, they've not offered a single apology. But I think uh, Judge Kata will bear me out. It was the lawyer for the EC in Hope who actually offered some semblance of apology. Because he said what happened was actually, um, I mean, doesn't supposed to happen. And we've never had a single apology. You know, there's, a, there's, a, there's an extent to which you can say that, look, well, these things were administrative errors. They were not. These were very planned and well executed um, actions that the EC took. And I dare suggest to you that the government was in full support of it. I mean, Tambocho and Co were all part of this whole grand lesson in order to deny its representation. Mm -hmm. And I think that all their heads in shame. Uh, it cannot be appeased by the fact that we may be asked to, to vote in the next, 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 next uh, parliament. That's so you're not moving on like Mr. Davis is asking all of us to move on? Well, it's not about moving on. Moving on is to say sorry and apologize, not to be emboldened in your own position and making it sound as though we were just dummies. Right? So that's I what mean, you're that... asking the Electoral Commission to do now, even with uh, 40 days to the general election? Well, I should be advising every constituent in any part of this country to be aware. I know, you know, you know, gerrymandering doesn't only happen by administratively changing maps. Of, uh, of electoral areas. I mean, it can start from even on the electoral that are issued at the, at, the, at the dead of midnight and can render a uh, section of uh, Ghanaians, um, should I call it, uh, uh, you can rent, it can disenfranchise you. So I think many Ghanaians should be really, really wide awake and they should be very, very vigilant because anything can happen. I and do not trust EC and I'm not the only one who doesn't trust the EC. Mm. You see, the EC's trust levels have fallen all over to 28% as we speak. <laughs> so there's a problem uh, with trust uh, in the Electoral Commission. Mr. Davis, you have the opportunity to respond to yes. this when I come back to you. But I want to come back to Mr. Chikata because as we talk about this, and I mentioned earlier that there are rising tensions as we go into this year's general election. And one of the issues coming up that people believe is contributing to these tensions you're seeing is what's happening between Parliament and the Supreme Court. And I'm sure if you've been following, and uh, Vincent Asafwa, our uh, Deputy Local Government Minister, MP for uh, Tafo Pankrono, I'll come to you very shortly. But let me get this uh, first thought from Mr. Chikata on what's happening between Parliament and the Supreme Court and how you believe is contributing to the rising tensions with 40 days to the uh, country's general election. Yeah, I, I can't say that I have um, full information on that subject, um, from partial information, I mean, there are questions that I, I have um, because when I see a situation in which the Supreme Court says that they are staying execution of a ruling of parliament their questions. Parliament is not part of the judicial hierarchy, so I don't know how a Supreme Court states execution of a ruling of the Speaker of Parliament. You think that was But right? as I say, these are questions that I have. I can't, I can't say that I'm fully familiar. You know, before I air opinions on legal matters, I try to, you know, make sure that I'm very familiar and that I'm on very solid ground. I think that's one of the lessons that um, both as a student and as a teacher, I have tried to live by in my legal career. So, so I, if you don't mind, I do want to go back a little bit. I see that you're in a bit of a hurry to let sleeping dogs lie as far as Sal is concerned. But let me tell you two reasons why for me, um, it's not such a simple matter as perhaps um, Frank Davis is suggesting. And, and I, I want um, you know, Frank and I to have a, a very direct engagement on this. You know, I think as, as lawyers and also as people who are interested in the progress of democracy, we have to worry about bad examples being set. Because when bad examples are set, it may be done one day seemingly in a manner that favors one party, but another day, that bad example will be used again to favor the other party. So in my mind, if we don't acknowledge 
that there is a bad example which we really <coughs> cannot defend and so on, then we have a problem. The second point that I want to make in respect of that is that the Attorney General went to Parliament and, and in fact, I think Frank Davis also has been involved in a case in um, in Huawei, in which basically you were relying. Uh, the, the Attorney General said to Parliament that um, you know the, the 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 people should have been allowed to vote in Boem, and that um, Boem constituency results should be annulled, so that. It's, it's, you know, they can have the election again. I mean, that was the position of the Attorney General of Ghana. And that was a position that was being advocated in a court in Hohoe as well. Now, then in May, 16th of May this year, you have the EC on behalf of whom these steps are being taken impliedly, I say on behalf, even though you are not, you know, advocating for the EC uh, directly, I mean, the position that you're taking is more or less a position which tries to protect what they have done. So, three years down the road, they then now come out with a statement saying that if they had allowed the people to vote in the Boehm constituency, it would have been illegal. I mean, how does that make you feel? You know, because that's, I mean, do you agree with them that it's illegal? And if so, then it confirms a point that I want to insist on, that, you know, democracy is something that we all cherish in terms of building democracy. We are still, as a country, a relatively young country, but the aspiration to deepen democracy also has to do with wider, you know, convictions that we have as a people. Democracy is vital to national unity. So if you have a situation, you know, those people in the South areas, as against the people in the rest of Norway, there are, you know, sort of ethnic differences and so on. And and if, if, if you create a situation in which you're whipping up these sort of ethnic divisions, I don't think you're doing us any good in terms of the aspiration to democracy, to national unity. So I take these things quite seriously. And I, I don't feel that it's just a matter of, you know, let's move on because, as I said, let's move on. Another time, the, the, I mean, the, the, the situation can be used against you. The table's you content, today. that's what you're saying. The tables can turn. That's what you're saying. Another time. Yeah, and we've seen it. I mean, you know. Now, I mean. now uh, Mr. Chikata, based on the argument you've built, and Ms. Okuja Tablakwa also uh, corroborated, or as it were, supported uh, some of the points you made, do you think that th these are enough grounds for the removal of the Electoral Commission boss, Jimenza? Well, I mean, you know, be, I think it's very serious. I, I think it's very serious. I have no doubt about that. But not to that I, extent. I, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of other things that I'm concerned about in terms of the Electoral Commission. When, when you have a chairperson of the Electoral Commission who swears to an affidavit that they will give evidence in a matter and doesn't show up and so on, those are all matters of concern to me. But, I mean, I... I I, really, I, haven't, I haven't given very much thought to it. You know, I, I don't, I don't uh, go beyond my limits. You don't go beyond your limits. Let me get a brief rea uh, reaction from you, uh, Mr. Davis, and then uh, we'll move on. Uh, uh, Mr. Shikata, I, 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 I haven't in any manner or by stretch of any imagination downplayed uh, the passion with which you spoke and the reasons you have espoused for what happened. I mean, I have made it quite clear here in the studio. Everybody has said me, Ghanaians have heard me. I say it was an unfortunate situation. I have not glorified it. 
I mean, nobody can be disenfranchised by any act or deed. I mean, you don't have the right to take somebody's voting right from him or her. I have said it openly and plainly. So I, I can understand why I'm being put on the spotlight as if I am supporting the EC on this. I haven't. I've made it quite clear here, and I spoke in clear English language, that it was an unfortunate incident and it shouldn't have happened. But they have come to give an explanation of what happened. I mean, it will not sound right with you. It will not sit comfortably with you. It will not make any impression on you because that is not your expectation. And that is not the expectation of the people of, of, of South. But that is what the EC has said. What more can I say? I mean, this is the time for us to hold ourselves together. I'm saying we should move on, not because I'm saying what happened was good. But we can't reverse the clock. I mean, it's already happened. It's something in the past. So please, sir, I'm not saying that I'm, 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 I'm inclined to support what the EC has done and sometime it will be used against me or against someone. I mean, please, I, I don't support that they were disenfranchised. It's as simple as that. But there was a supposed reason for it. No matter how bad that reason was, it's been rectified now. And I'm just saying that as Ghanaians, we should all learn to move on. That's all. As Ghanaians, we should all learn to move on. I want to come to you, uh, Vincent, and I, I, you may have the opportunity, I mean, to uh, also give your brief comment on whether, indeed, we need to let sleeping dogs lie. But uh, what I really want to ask you is, with 40 days to the country's general election and the rising tensions, I'm sure you might have heard that uh, uh, the lady who was with the NPP has decided to go independent, Agona West, uh, there was a supposed assassination attempt on her. Uh, there's rising tension in the northern part of the country. Uh, Boko, I mentioned that there's already a six to six uh, curfew on it. As a member of parliament, with of course what's happening in parliament, which is your office uh, and, and the Supreme Court, what do you make of really what's happening? And before you even answer the question, I want to read a statement uh, that has come in from the U.S. Secretary of State. And this is coming from Reuters. What, uh, uh, Reuters is reporting this, and it says the United States on Monday, which is today, announced the visa restriction policy for individuals uh, Washington deems responsible for undermining democracy in Ghana ahead of the December presidential and parliamentary elections in the West African country. And there's a quote from the U.S. Uh, uh, government, and it says this visa restriction policy would apply only to specific individuals who undermine democracy and is not directed at the Ghanaian people nor the government of Ghana. How do you respond to this? And this was issued by uh, Anthony Blinken, who is the Secretary of State, in a statement. Well, let me say a very good evening to you and to your cherry viewers. More importantly, to the other discussants the line. I'm surprised why I have not been given an opportunity to have a bite on the cell uh, discussion. You have it now. You can talk yeah. about it right. before you answer this direct so question let, let as well. Let me before I can come to the question. Um, my, my, my view on the cell discussion is that uh, first and foremost, it seems to me that it is a miscalculation on the part of Parliament and the EC as far as the application of the constitutional provisions of this country is concerned, or by extension, the laws of Ghana is concerned. And this miscalculation has led us to where we are today. Um, also, I do not also think um, that the conclusions from my brother, Franklin Kujo, and uh, the Honorable Kude Pablaqua um, should really be the case. Uh, I think uh, the, the senior colleague in the studio, Frank Davis, put it right uh, that this is not the fault of uh, the government, uh, if I should say. Um, but maybe the EC uh, may have to own up. Of course, the first will give you reasons. Um, but I would want to ask very simple questions. Uh, the back of the argument that were made by the Honorable uh, Kudeta Blaba and Tachifikata. Uh, My first question is, is it the case that by virtue of a CI, 
the OT region was created out of the Volta region, if that is the case. Is it also the case that part of OT, part of OT was now, as it were, um, made to be part of some traditional areas of South, or put differently, some South traditional areas have now been made to be part of a team. Is that the case? Is it also the case that, oh boy, because of the creation, or if you like the demarcation, was part of the voter region? If that is the case, is it also the case that by virtue of Hohoi being part of the Volta region, some traditional areas of Hohoi, which is inclusive, inclusive of the South, that is the fourth district, was now part of OT region as per the CI 112. Is it also the case that yeah, some yeah. areas? We're placed uh, under Mr. the Tepo, just I, I think Mr. Chikata wants to respond to some of the questions you've just Mr. asked. Mr. Chikata, Mr. Chikata should I, hold on. Mr. Chikata should I hold on. I think it's better to I take them one by one. Otherwise, we're going to get into... And we are, we're actually one. running out of time. Right. Because you raised an important, important matter about CI-112. Yes, and so I so wanted so to yeah. just respond on CI-112. Please, you, can, you have the time to respond to it. I'm asking these questions based on your submissions that you made, so that you know that we are putting matters into proper perspective. Mm -hmm. I am also asking, that is it the case that South, that is the four districts, were placed under the Jessican district in the OT region? So you see the confusion that we have, and why I earlier said that it seems to me that it is a miscalculation on the part of Parliament and EC in applying the constitutional provisions of this country or by extension, the laws of Ghana. Is it also the case that there was a new CI that was enacted to alter the boundaries of Hohoi constituency, knowing very well that the continued stay with Hohoi will affect a constitutional provision, which is Article 47.2. Which is Article 47.2. Is, is, is that the case? If that is the case, is it also the case that the new CI, that is the new constitutional instrument, 128, that was enacted, also placed SAL under BUE? Mr. Safa, I will be so, very glad if you can so, land on your point so there will be some time to respond so, to this because so we need to the wrap point up. I'm trying to make it's unfortunate that when the others were speaking, they didn't give them this amount. Unfortunately, of we didn't question, see you earlier, so. I have, Please go. I have on. been on because of your network. But the point I'm trying to make is that I'm asking all these questions for us to know that the conundrum, the quagmire that we face or Sal has faced has not been intentional on the part of anybody. I'm not trying to hold brief for the EC. I'm not holding brief for Parliament. But this mass miscalculation has brought us to where we are has, today. Has brought us to where we has brought us to where we are today mr chikata if you can briefly respond to this yeah, and also but, tell but, us how worried you are with the rising just, tensions going into this year's election I, I'm, I'm just going to deal with <laughs> one give me the time to respond to the matters <laughs> constitutional instrument 112 which you referred to as having taken traditional areas out read ci 112 the operative you know, part of that CI says that OT region shall comprise the districts specified in the schedule. When you go to the schedule, the first eight are districts, then nine is South traditional areas. Those are not a district. And you are a deputy minister of local government. You can check that. South traditional areas at that time did not constitute a district, so you cannot Absolutely. say Absolutely. on the Absolutely. operate. You but can't. My, I'm point, sorry. my point is yes, I, I agree. But my point is, South or part of Hawaii, which is inclusive of South, okay, was now part of the OT region. No, no. Very well that Hawaii that, is in the Volta region. That's what I'm explaining to you. That didn't happen because the operative co the operative provision says OT region shall comprise the districts 
specified in the schedule. If something is not a district, then it did not become part of OT region. And South traditional areas were not a district. Mr. Chikata and Mr. Safwa, uh, unfortunately, I need to get uh, the wrapping comment. Oh, I'm hoping that we are able to uh, make time again for this very conversation just so we can have some more time to exhaust it. But I'll be glad if you're able to give us your final thoughts in the, 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 the direction of the rising tensions going into this year's election and how worried you are. And uh, Mr. Davis, you'll have the opportunity to give us your thought as well. And I'll give the same a minute to each of you so we'll wrap up very quickly. I mean, like many Ghanaians, I am deeply worried about the state of security, rising tensions, the incendiary language, and the renewal of conflicts. I'm just reading a statement issued today by the Kosok Traditional Council. I can only appeal to the people of Boku and the surrounding areas to give peace a chance. And those who are stoking the embers behind the scenes, they ought to be advised to stop it so that we can go into this election and, and live beyond the election in peace. Those who are also engaging in violence, like what happened in the case of the Honorable Cynthia Morrison, mm. we cannot accept those tendencies. And that is why, even though I am an avowed Pan-Africanist and I am not one who you know, believes in other countries appearing to want to, if you like, meddle or dictate, I am in this particular instance, pleased with what the United States of America has done. That visa restriction announced by Secretary of State Blinken is so welcome. It's it is a positive development because, you see, the U.S. remains the favorite destination of African mm. politicians. And those who think that they can foment trouble, rig elections, mm, uh, set up this country in flames and then run with their families they will be of, held accountable they will be held accountable let me come they to will you stay Mr. here Davis. with all of us mm. so so look it worked in nigeria last year mm. people were were sanctioned and it it, it calmed tension so uh even though ordinarily i'm not one who is will 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 will, will be excited about these external you know interventions in in this instance in some they instances should be they, they should be welcomed it helps all of us and Ms. we must call everybody to order so Call everybody to order. This is the Mr. only Davis. country we have. Mm. Mr. Davis, your thoughts? Well, I'm, 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 I'm glad in to, seconds. Because I'm glad to hear such words of 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 avowed inspiration from Sami. But in another place, I want to say that we, as as political actors, also have to be mindful. Yeah. The kind of language yeah. we are using on 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 platforms, the airwaves. Yeah. Radio stations. I mean, it's it's just it's just not right. No, so I agree. I agree. whilst you see, whilst we are advising people to be calm, to use very polite and decent language, we the political actors mm -hmm. should should set within ourselves and ask whether we are also advising ourselves well. Because look, mm. I mean, I I cannot for one understand why. Mm. Whether on the MPP side or on the NDC side, a senior political figure should incite people and say that, look, if the elections goes this way or this way, we will rise up, we will not. You see, we should speak language which is comforting. We should speak language which is comforting. And that those who take inspiration from us will also learn well, to speak the way we speak. <laughs> I am saying that... It is only one Ghana we have. Well, we you may, can run to Nigeria, you can run to Togo, we may have you can to, run to Benin. We may have to make day, time. Yeah, we can, may have to make time again yeah. for this very conversation. It looks like uh, we have to talk about this again. But that will be it for our agenda. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chachichikata, for joining us on this conversation. Thank you as well, Frank Davis, uh, for joining us. Uh, uh, Samuel Okuja Tablakwa as well. Uh, also, Franklin Kujo, President, Imani Africa, and Vincent Asafu. Well, unfortunately, you didn't have enough time uh, to talk about this. But thank you so much. My name is Beatrice Edu. Thank you for joining us on Agenda tonight. Join us again next week.